Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. I've taken a bit of time to get to this episode because I really didn't want to have one of my Kerbals perish during Christmas. It was an, on my high on my to-do list during, during the vacation time, but uh, here we are now and we have to deal with the fact that... Oh, we can't check it over here. We have to deal with the fact that our Kerbal in the Gold Bug is about to run out of supplies. So that is the thing that we're working on right now. I've tried a few things, not much. I'd, I mean, I'm sure there are other ways of going about this, but uh, somebody mentioned clearing up. Uh, was there the module tug still on the surface near there? Yeah. So one thing we can do is clear the module tug. I've already zipped up the save just in case I need to restore it if anything happens. Is there anything else uncrewed nearby within render range? Obviously there's the emergency hab, but that's not in render range, and we need that. If we get the Kerbals out, we can move them over there. So we would like to keep that. We have a lot of debris around Kerbin. If we take away all of our missions, let's see. That should do the trick. This is the debris we have around the moon. None on the surface there, as you can see. Yeah, let's recover this, definitely recover the stuff on the surface of Kerbin. Come on. Should have done that a while ago. So now this stuff is on a suborbital trajectory and just hasn't gotten nixed yet. This mid range resupply seems to be all in suborbital pieces. Uh. I, I have this thing that doesn't have a name. That seems dubious, doesn't it? I just uh, deleted a bunch of stuff. It still shows 158 on the debris count. Let me hop back out of the tracking station and hop back in. And A, see if that has a name. And B, see if the debris count changes. Well, the debris count has changed by 25. We're down to 133. Uh, let's see if we still have a thing without a name in. Yeah, we do. Well, I have to check out what that is, huh? Uh, yes, I know the gold bug is running out. This is a uh, spent stage of some kind, obviously. Very much spent. Wow. Totally spent. How much time for the gold bug, by the way? Three days. Oh, well, back to tracking station. We can get rid of this. So I'm continuing to get rid of stuff that uh, should have been deorbited. They were suborbital trajectories. Here's a curious one. There's the old half moon Yako Wako Dot that's in flight. In other words, its periapsis is 39 kilometers. Its apoapsis is only 67. So it's actually completely in the atmosphere. And still Kerbal didn't get rid of it. So, okay. So lots of cleaning up to do. I'll try my best and then I'll zip up the save so that I have the cleaned up copy of everything. And then we'll try to jump to the Kerbitat to see if we can save the Kerbals again. Okay, well, here we go. Let me go to the Kerbitat and basically what happens happens, I guess. I don't know. I mean, because I don't know how else to solve it. We'll see. Maybe maybe we'll go with the explanation that there's a reactor explosion on the moon. That would be pretty likely, actually. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Come on. Maybe can I quickly EVA? No, I can't get to them. No, it glitched. It glitched. EVA? Oh, I, I couldn't EVA. Uh, didn't make a sound. Maybe I can jump to the part. Okay, uh, EVA maybe? Uh, okay, hold on. Y you can hopefully survive. Uh, let's get to any other part where they might be. I don't think they're, they're back. I don't think they're around. That might have been a part where they were in. Oh, the things are exploding already. Oh, 
Well, this mic. I don't know. I don't know what kind of impact tolerance we're gonna have with these guys. The gold bug was sitting there, nice and tight. What? Hmm, some of these pieces are not exploding as much as before. Some of them are. Well, anyway, uh, let's start off with this guy. Come on. Okay. Oh wait, there was, there was a cripple here. Desiree can EVA. Let's just get him out. Oh, there's Rick, there's Rick popped up again. Uh oh. Um, hold on. Can we find. Mike Kerman is down there. Desrick is in the air. Maybe we can do a better job. Hold on. Oh, dang it. I want to get to Desrick. Okay, uh. Okay, he took a bounce. Okay, where's, where's, uh, I think we lost the one in the gold bug, though. I think we, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, well, this might be the best we could do. Maybe if I destroyed more debris, I could have saved the Kerbal and the gold. The gold bug seems intact, though, weirdly enough. We'll, we'll go check that out, too. We got a lot more debris to clean up, obviously. Hmm. Stuff is still randomly exploding. Actually, um, hmm. Come to think of it, maybe we should have Mike come over here since this seems to be further away from the area with all the explodey stuff going on. Let me set Rover Alpha as target so that Desert can see where it is. Uh, where is it? Oh, okay, it's over there. So yeah, Desert should should not go back. He should just go forward this way. Boy, there's a piece of the Kerbatat all the way over there. Well, that piece sure flew quite a ways. Don't know exactly how much food, water, and oxygen we have at the emergency hab. Okay. Nice. Into that trip. Let's see. Let's get him into the hab and then we'll see how much food, water, and oxygen he has. I wonder if it's possible that the new graphics card actually helped with the whole dealing with the base destruction and rescuing these two Kerbals thing. It's possible. I mean, to be sure, I didn't have the kind of frame rates before that would allow me to rescue them very well. I don't know. And board. Okay, in the emergency hab. Looks like 236 days with one crew member, so 118 days with two. Okie dokie. Um, I don't think I can jump to Mike from here. Too much stuff there. Wants me to go to the gold bug. Let's go to the space center and then go to him. Well, before I do that, I decided to hop over here and indeed Dan Me Kerman, the, the Kerbal who was in the gold bug, did perish, unfortunately. Killed in action at the explosion of the base. But we had scant chance to save him otherwise, so... Well, that was the loss I was afraid of. Let's let's try and make sure Mike is safe, though. He's on EVA here. Well, here's poor little Mike in the middle of the debris field. There was... A, oh, and stuff is still exploding here. Um... There was still a gold bug apparently, but let's let's get Mike 
safe, huh? That seems like a good idea. I'm getting close to the RAM limit again, that's probably why it feels a little bit sticky right now. 3.4 gigabytes of RAM. And steadily increasing, in fact. It's like going up like one megabyte every second. Not a good thing. I have feeling I need to set Mike down and restart this thing. We're uh, getting into fairly perilous numbers on the memory here. And there is a leak going on, so every second we go on, it's using one more megabyte. Okay. Mike is down on the ground safely. Nice touchdown. And yeah. So just as I set Mike down and prepared to quit, it actually crashed on me. It reached 3.7 gigabytes of RAM. Well, here's Mike. And I note that there are two pieces of the gold bug apparently. But but look, Mike's over here where the base was. The pieces of the gold bug are on the opposite side of the moon from where they were. And possibly somewhat in the ground, I can't really tell. But wow, that's some glitch. The Kerbatad is still over here. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. I don't know if he's backward, because it crashed right when I set him down. Don't know if he's, he might be in the midst of it still. I might have to get him all the way over there. Alright, let's get on with it. Yeah, we, we've got the full distance to go. Alright. Uh, I'm not having any luck moving Mike at all. What if he is glitched? I'm trying to switch away and then switch back to Mike. Got a lot of pieces here. I mean, we've got uh, five pieces that were actually counted as missions, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's just debris. Yeah, I can't move Mike. I, I've pressed R many times as well, just for you to know. Uh, Mike might be glitched. Ram is creeping up again. Let me go back to the tracking station. Well, as curious as I am about what went on there... I'm going to just clear up all the debris from the destruction of the Kerbatat and the Gold Bug. Which weren't attached, by the way. They individually glitched. That's worth noting. And then see if we can free Mike Kerman from the stranglehold they have over him, I guess. I don't know. Alright, I'll get back to you once I'm done with that. Okay, come on. Pull yourself together, Kerbal. Okay, uh... Yes, yes. Okay, we've got traction here. Good. All right, that aways, and frame rates. Ooh, look, thirty frames per second, and that's only uh, because while I'm recording, I lock it at thirty, and it's not like I ever got higher than thirty frames per second before. We are now in render range of the emergency hab. There we go. Let's see. Now that we're in render range of the emergency hab, by the way, it's dropped to 15 frames per second. So yeah, I figure that while we have 100 days worth of supplies in the emergency hab, probably our Kerbals here are a bit traumatized after the experience. We should probably bring them back home as soon as possible. So that's gonna be the plan. Oh, so I'm a little bit worried that another glitch of some kind might happen. The emergency hab is not without Infernal Robotics or KAS parts. I think it has a few. Okay, down, down. Plop. Alright. Okay, grab. Shift on up board. Okay, well Mike and Desric are in the emergency hab. We lost one Kerbal, Danmi Kerman. Um, let's go back to the VAB to assess the situation. Well, there's the broken infernal robotics parts for you. Okay, 
Okay, I believe we will launch this, the CRT on the Strider SL. And it's already equipped with a probe core, so we don't have to send a Kerbal up on it. It's got the landing legs. It's got 4,575 Delta V, which should be enough to transfer to the moon, land on the moon, pick up the Kerbals, and come back. And possibly make a landing at the KSC if we do everything right, but I'm not going to push it. Um, yeah, so looks good. We could add another engine if we wanted to, but it's already got 1.06 thrust weight ratio on Kerbin, which is more than enough for the moon, of course. So I don't think it's necessary. Yep. And uh, considering we didn't lose any Kerbals on this, I guess it was safe? Um, yeah. I'll, I'll go with that theory and hope that it is, in fact, uh, safe for re-entry. But yeah, I'll need to restart again, of course, because we've been hopping about and uh, after we start we will launch this pick up the kerbals and hopefully bring them back safely with with some experience not a whole lot they've been sitting around on the moon i know it's not gonna be too much but it'll be something so yeah they'll be part of our veteran crew okay here we are throttle up sas on and we are going to attempt to bring back some kerbals Okay, so ignition and launch. Ah, the slow rise of this system. Okay, quite a heavy load. Lots of delta V involved. Okay, getting ready for first stage out. Well, we lost the uh, vernier thrusters. We can't really maneuver right now. Okay, separation. And ignition. Off it goes. Alright, looking good. Skipper is alright. We'll hopefully recover that booster. Uh, we've already got the message that the stage has been recovered. Very good. Okay, we'll definitely want this stage to deorbit. And we'll have it, we'll keep it at a negative periapsis to make absolutely sure. Okay, uh, separation. And off it goes. We'll just coast to apolapsis here. Solar panels out. Okay, that will do for now. Let's plot for the moon. Okay, that'll do. Uh, well, 12 kilometers is a little bit tight, but we'll adjust that during the burn. 830 meters per second. I'm expecting about a thousand to land just so uh, to make sure that we land at the site really close to the emergency hab. I want that kind of margin. And it'll take about 250 to get into orbit around the moon. So that's 2,080 altogether there. Then maybe 800 to get back to orbit with margin again. 2,880. Uh, 200 or so to get back here. So that leaves us with more than 1,000 left over. Okay, let's go. Probably a little bit early. Okay. Uh, 176 is a little bit far. Okay, that should be good enough. Alright, let's head over there. So, panels are already out. We're on the dark side, so we're losing a little bit of electric charge here, but we have plenty to spare. Okay, we have our approach to the moon. And, well, we could do with a little bit more inclination, frankly. Yeah, we've only got 2.6 degrees, whereas the site is at more than 10 degrees. So let's uh, not deflect the other way. Um, yeah, maybe we should just skip this maneuver altogether. That seems legit. That seems fine. Okay. We're not in a very good place to to match the inclination of the target. If it was like, uh, it was nine degrees away from where it is right now, if it was, 
on this side right here, it'd be easier. So this is a little bit more than I expected for getting into orbit, but it's taking a bite out of how much I planned for descent, so it's alright. Because we're going right into the descent burn here. With the inclination adjustment included. Okay, that should be fine. Targeting things on the ground hasn't been the best thing to do before, but doesn't seem to cause glitchy issues right now, so okay. Probably still need to go a little bit north. Yeah, it was only at the Kerbitat where that caused problems. And Lord knows I was full of glitches anyway. I swear we must be going too slow at this point. But, okay, there we go. We're one kilometer off according to it. And it's sort of like that. Hmm. Well, that's very optimistic of it. That doesn't give me much time to cut the rest of my speed off, does it? Let's say... It all depends on your thrust to weight ratio, of course. But let's say I want to overshoot about 3 kilometers. Which will give me time to cut my surface horizontal velocity. Well, 36 seconds to suicide burn countdown. I probably don't want to do a suicide burn, especially since I'm planning to correct a little bit north here. But I'll wait until we're uh, 10 seconds from the end of the countdown. Still have the stripey texture on the landscape. Don't know what causes that. Really would like that fixed. Okay, we have lights on the surface. Let's just kill horizontal velocity here. Not as close as I wanted it, but let's set it down here. We know they can EVA this distance. Okay, it is on the ground. Uh, they'll have to. They'll have to use their little. EVA packs to get up there. No ladder down. Unfortunately, I forgot to add that. Alright. Not the rover. The hab. There we go. Alright, Mike was in the hab second. He'll head to the rescue vehicle first. The ram situation is horrible. We're, we're at 3.5 again, and it's doing that climby thing. I swear, Mike is really bad with ram. I don't know why. Grab. Oh, don't go up. Board. Alright, Mike's in. Let's see if I have enough RAM left to get uh, our other Kerbal. Desric. Okay, EVA Desric. Okay, grab. Okay, get back down. Grab. Have you grabbed at all? Doesn't seem like it. Grab. And board. Okay, now it would be safer for me to restart before I bring them back, so I will do so. Okay, I obviously restarted, but on returning, I see that the CRT is on a suborbital trajectory. I was sort of expecting it to be landed on the moon. So I'm sort of afraid about what I'm going to find when I switch to it. Let's find out. Oh! Oh! It disappeared! No! What? Okay, well, no extra dead. Desert and Mike are in the emergency hab. So it was like the CRT never landed and they were never transferred to it? Okay, I guess that was the RAM thing. We were too close to the RAM limit that it didn't save the state in time, I guess. I don't know. 
I wasn't able to save the new state. Well, I guess it's good that Desric and Mike are still alive. I guess I'm gonna have to figure out another way to save them. Looks like I'm gonna have RAM issues every time. I, I did restart before launching that mission. And restart again after they were in it, but... Oh well, okay. Um, let's take care of some other business then. I guess I can't save them just yet. Or bring them back just yet. We've saved them, technically, but we can't bring them back. Yeah, let's take a look at some of our other missions while they're safe in the emergency hab and have food, water, and oxygen. Let me get some interplanetary stuff done quickly. Okay, so here we are with a scanner pro headed for Drez, and it's going to reach Drez SOI in 27 days, and we're just trying to get it into orbit, is what's happening. So, let's go. It looks like electric charge is balanced. Let's make sure. Do we have a battery locked somewhere, just in case? Got one there. There's probably another one underneath. Let's lock the one underneath. Okay, let's go. Just in case the solar panels somehow get oriented the wrong way. Okay, we are in Dres Sphere of Influence. Our periapsis seems to be 225 kilometers, which should be alright. Uh, our approach appears to be inclined. Yeah, 67 degrees. Maybe not as inclined as we want for a scanner, so let me fix that right now. Let's get rid of this. And I would like to focus on Drez if it'll let me. That'll probably do the trick. Okay. That'll be good. Inclination 89.95. But our periapsis went out a little bit further than I thought it would. Uh, maybe we should get that further in, maybe under 250. Seems like a good idea. Here, I'll just maneuver it myself. So, we are apparently in a situation where Duna doesn't have water. I'll double check that. But we really want to see water on Drez. That's an open question now. And we've already got stuff to exploit water on Drez, so... It'll be a huge disappointment if we can't use any of that stuff. We launched all of it at great expense. And it'll all go to waste. I I haven't started uh, looking at colonization in 1.0.5. I was going to see how different it is, right? I need to see whether Duna has water. That, that should be my first mission. I'll just be playing around in sandbox because I'm experimenting in it. We'll see about that. Okay, there we go. 233 by 213. And, well, I'm curious. What's our next mission? Well, this was the scanner pro. Quad Pro Pack in 31 days. So let, let's let it uh, scan for a bit and we'll see what the results are. I don't think there's any other scanner implement on here. There's just, uh, there's just this thing. Okay, there's the stretch. Okay, there's water. I don't know what it was telling us, but there's water. Water 2% or so. There's a little patch there. Let's have it do some more scanning. Wow, so Drez might be more important to us than Duna? It's gonna be a shock. Wonder how we got this portion scanned like that. And yet nothing else. I guess the Drez Oasis can scan the surface for relief, for altitude? Well, it's not really altitude, for imagery, but not for resources. So yeah, there's water there. There's no water around here. Huh. In the... In the equatorial regions, no water. More water up north and down south. Let's see, how much time do we have? Yeah, still 31 days. Okay, let me let, let it run for a bit. Oh, you have to refresh it like that. I see, I see. You have to tell it to rescan for resources. That's why it wasn't showing me the updated version. Okay. 
so you can't just expect it to refresh the water map without clicking that. Let's check back on Duna. Maybe I messed up on that over there too. Okay, here is our Duna Scanner Pro, which is perfectly identical to the one that we have around Drez. Same launch, launch configuration. And let's make sure. Yes, we are resource scanning. It says water in the Atmo is 5%. That's interesting. But water in the atmosphere, I'm not too sure how that helps us. Okay, so it's going to start up an altimetry map of Duna. And I want water. Let me remind it of that. Well, I think the, the result is pretty clear. Drez has more water than Duna. And this is not a fluke. Uh, our scan line is here. That's the Drez map up there. The scanner works on Drez. It finds water. And finds no water on Duna. This is... This is Kerbin shattering news. Well, on that bombshell, I think I'll leave it for now. We rescued two out of three Kerbals. I guess that's the best I could do. Uh, poor Dammy Kerman uh, could not be rescued. And, uh, well, at least we got two back. Well, we haven't got two back yet. And it looks like we got to have a tricky business trying to get them back. And we got a scanner in orbit around Drez successfully. And it has found water which we can't find around Duna. So, that's the situation. We might as well move our assets from Duna over to Drez, I guess. I mean, there's no point in having all this stuff around Duna now. If we can't find water here, but Drez has the water. Well, we'll think about that. Alright, and so in the next episode, I'm going to be looking to deal with this uh, quad probe pack that will be entering Jewel SOI. This bop probe. That is going to be, uh, I don't know if that's a mid-course plane change, well it's some sort of adjustment, but it should be entering Jewel SOI pretty soon. And this Paul probe and water fountain also entering Jewel. So all of that, uh, lots of Jewel stuff, and then there's the Jewel Oasis and Jewel Supply mission. So we've got a lot of, well, the next episode is going to be a Super Jewel mission episode. Alright, so thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode, if you did enjoy it please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.